Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Skymaster F-18 build series. Um, hopefully you had a little bit of a laugh at that. But uh, in this video, we are focusing on the main fuel system in the rear portion of the fuselage. So, we got the other smoke stick um, assembled. So this was just like in the end of last video, this is going in the other side. This will we'll call the, the left side a, a backup just in case we want to run two. But anyways, that's done. We'll glue that in tonight, but uh, there's really nothing to show you with that because it matches the other side. So in this video, we are focusing on fuel system. Um, so what we have to do is we've got to get the, uh, the saddle tanks figured out. We've got to get these tanks cleaned up because there's tons of debris in there from uh, from drilling them out and putting the pieces in. We've got to get the all the fittings and stuff done in the tanks. So that's going to be primarily what we focus on in this video. We'll be installing the tanks, figuring that portion out, and uh, kind of finalizing the wiring and everything. And uh, once we get the two saddle tanks installed, we need to start focusing on the, the main control plate in the back of the, uh, the airplane as well. So there's kind of a bunch of random things we'll be doing to finish up the back portion of this plane. But uh, without further ado, let's dive in. All right, so there's lots of different ways to clean tanks. Some of the ways are better than others. Um, I've heard of people putting water in these tanks. Don't put water in the tanks. Uh, that's going to take a long time to get the water out. Um, I have used uh, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol before, and uh, it works pretty good. It's just expensive. Um, so you, you can use alcohol. It doesn't really dry very well because there's not a lot of evaporation that happens with only one, uh, one bung. Um, I've heard of people putting a vacuum up to the tank. Uh, that's not a great idea as well because you'll find that this tank's not bad because it's small, but like on the main tank, it's quite flexy. So you could suck those tanks in and you're, you're not going to get all the, uh, the fine stuff out. Um, the best thing I've found to do is just put some regular fuel in here, some regular, if you're using diesel or Jet-A or, or kerosene or whatever you're using, put it in here, shake it up, and uh, I, don't, I don't like reusing it. I guess you could filter it, but I just dump it out uh, with my, my vehicle oil. So anyways, that's what I'm going to do um, is basically just put some fuel in here on all three of the tanks, give them a good shake, dump it out, put some more fuel in there, give it a good shake, dump it out. So that's what, I, what I'm going to do with the three tanks to get them clean. All right, guys, so this is what I've uh, basically come up with as far as uh, the, uh, the saddle tank line set up. Uh, so we've got our vent line, which is going to go in. Uh, it's on the left here, and that bend actually flows nicely to the, uh, to the back corner of the tank. And uh, then we've got our, our main clunk line. Now, I'm not too worried about the saddle tanks. I mean, they're a weird shape anyway, so getting a, a clunk that's going to move to all corners of the tank is really not possible. But uh, because these are feeding the main tank, we just want a good, reliable fuel source. So that's what I've come up with the, the main there. Uh, now, one thing to note is the SkyMaster um, tubes that they include are extremely thin and, uh, in my mind, basically useless. So uh, what, I actually had a package of CARF ones that I'm, I'm using. And you can see the CARF one here on the left and the SkyMaster one on the right. Big difference in thickness. So if you try and bend the SkyMaster ones, they just snap. That's what happened with this end right here. Um, the CARF ones are a lot more... Um, you can do more with them because the wall thing just is bigger. So one thing I like to do, guys, with uh, just... This is one of my little tricks for you to bending tubes. So if you have the... Uh, in the case of the uh, tube coming out for the vent on the inside of the tank, <clears throat> when this was coming out, if this is the back of the, the bung, what I do is I take a, an Allen key that fits inside the tube and I mark how long I've got, so about that long. Then I stick the Allen key in the tube and at that point you can use the Allen key, bend it, and it puts all the force at the end of the Allen key. Then I just move the Allen key out just a little bit, bend it, out, bend it, bend, 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 and then you get a nice bend in your tube, whatever you want, and uh, you don't crush the tube at all. So that's a little little trick for you, free of charge. Just hit that subscribe button or like button if you haven't done so already. Give the video a thumbs up. Um, so that's what we're doing for the tank plumbing. Now I'm going to have to make the other um, setup 
uh, right now because I want it to be exactly the same length with the vent lines and all that stuff. So um, this one is going in the that tank and then I'm going to do the other one up and uh, get those plumbed. All right, guys, well, I figured I might as well just show you on this one instead of just talking about it. Um, so right now, because we can we can take this tube and twist it, uh, it doesn't really matter what uh, angle we get the bend at. We just want to make a bend that's uh, similar to that one. So um, I'll just show you what the process is here. So the first thing I do is kind of get a, a rough mark where I can insert my Allen key. Okay, and then we're just going to go like that. Bend it a little bit, move it out. And you still can wreck the tube, um, so just be careful of that. You need to put pressure where the actual Allen key is with your uh, your thumb. Okay, so something like that. In this case, because we have um, the tube we can match to, um, obviously we bent it too much, which is no problem, but uh, we're just gonna bend it back to get the angles matched up. So that's how I bend the tubes and uh, helps keep it round. Uh, something else I just thought of to show you guys is you don't want to leave your vent tubes uh, cut square. Uh, the reason for that is obviously if they're flush and they butt up against part of the tank, they can uh, they can seal themselves off. So you want to just cut the uh, the vent tubing with a double angle on it like that, and then there's no way that they can get plugged. All right, guys, because my uh, my vent line is clear because I used. Um, Festo tubing. I can't see where the vent line is. So what I'm doing is I'm just filling these tanks uh, or this tank right now and uh, basically making sure that it fills all the way uh, before the uh, the uh, fuel starts coming out of the vent line. So that's what I'm doing. All right, guys. So initially I thought that I would just use one bung um, and have two lines coming off of the one. And uh, I thought that would work good problem is that um, you can't fit a line and one of these clunks through the holes these metal inserts that I put in so um, it's fine and dandy so now I have to have two bungs which is still okay but uh, basically I needed to glue another one in last night which I did so uh, we will have both of those guys in there so matching bungs so there's two um, fuel feed points to the UATs one from each hole then we'll have these two blank tubes we're just going to join those with a piece of uh, piece of tubing going to them um, anyways that's how the main tank set up and uh, it's all fine and dandy and uh, we do have a spare one of these from um, the previous tank so we're okay there but uh, the tanks are done next thing we're going to do is going to get the the clunks and everything inserted in the main tank and then we'll take all three of these tanks and uh, do the water test and I'll show you how that works okay guys we're going to um, leak test the tanks now one thing with the tanks is you do not need to pump any pressure into a tank when you leak test it so if you take a look here what we've done, uh, basically on this tank we've got an inlet and an outlet. So we've plugged the one. All I'm going to do is blow into this tube and uh, close it off with a pair of uh, forceps. And then we'll submerge it in the water and check for leaks. Now you can um, just keep your mouth on there and blow on it. But because we've put fuel in these tanks it doesn't taste so good when it shoots back in your mouth. So. So just a little bit of pressure. We can check the, the hose. There's no air coming out of there. And then we'll put the tank in the water. And check for air bubbles streaming out. So 
So that's it. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you didn't want to use the water trick, you could just pressurize the tank and then if you get close here, you'll see as soon as I let this go, it lets go of the pressure. So that tank's good. I'm going to check the other two. All right, guys, with the, um, the tanks all uh, checked and ready to go, now we can start working on getting the tanks installed and kind of getting the, the whole back end um, finished up. So I think what I'm going to do here just initially, going to uh, install two of the air tanks, I think right in this area. Um, that should work good. I might actually put four in there, honestly, because... Um, I'd rather not have them in the front, and I'd rather have them all kind of in the same location. So we might put all four air tanks right there. And then I am going to put the uh, the vent line right here as well, too. So what I've gone and done is I've labeled all the air lines from the back. So basically, they're, they're all nicely organized. We've got our brake line, which is black. We've got gear up and down. Uh, we've got two sets of um, uh, doors. Green is open, yellow is closed. And then we've got the two locks for the um, the gear itself. So gear down, unlock to, to go up. So they're, they're fairly straightforward on what they are. But uh, anyway, so what I've done is I have gone and labeled all the lines. Um, those will just tuck in kind of beside the tank. Um, so I basically need to figure out tank mounting for the primary tank. Um, I'm going to get those uh, those air tanks probably siliconed in place if they'll both fit there. And then what else we're going to do now is we're going to put the, uh, now that we've got all the lines labeled, we're going to put the um, tanks and everything in here and kind of figure out uh, how we're going to make a, um, a mounting system for the, uh, the kind of main plate here. So a couple uh, detailed things going on in the back end here, but that's uh, where we're at. Okay, guys, a couple things uh, progressing here. So I've glued the air tanks together. Uh, just used silicone to glue those together. Uh, put the uh, the air lines together. Now, one thing we're going to do, and this this uh, if this doesn't make sense to you right now, it'll make sense hopefully um, later. But uh, we are going to um, plumb it all as one system with the uh, the aircraft now. Um, it's going to have a fail-safe setup on it. Now, the one thing about plumbing it with, with one system is we're going to have the brakes set up on the gear down air line. So the brakes will only work. Um, let's say the brakes were to develop a leak. Um, they'll only work when the gear is down and that uh, the down air line is pressurized. So just keep that in mind um, when I'm setting this all up. So anyways, we got the air tanks done. They are going to go in this area in the fuselage right there. So I think that's the best area for it because it's not, not going to interfere with the front and uh, putting batteries and stuff in the nose. And that's just uh, basically call it useless space anyways. Um, so yeah, that'll, uh, that'll work well. Uh, we did install the vent line right there. And uh, if you put the vent all the way forward in this cavity, there's... Still a decent amount of space there for the tube to bend without it, without it uh, interfering with anything. <clears throat> anyway, so now we are moving on to the main tank installation. So I glued these in um, yesterday, so they're all nice and solid now. So these blocks basically are a little bit behind the face of the tank. So we install the tank in this area. Uh, the tank sits a little bit proud of these blocks. And the reason for that is because this foam is gonna compress and uh, we want that tank to stay nice and solid. So my plan with that is I'm going to put the main tank in here. We're gonna use one of these pieces. This is, I think, if you're putting a single turbine in there. But, uh, so we're gonna have a brace that goes across like that. And, um, that's the plan. So that'll keep the tank nice and snug. Now I was thinking initially about uh, fastening this to the front of the tank. I'm not sure, like gluing it, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that because then it might be a challenge to get out if we ever need to get it out. Um, but if I keep it fairly short, 
uh, we should be able to wiggle that out. So I'm going to play with that a little bit and see. But uh, that's the plan for the tank. So um, I think that'll work well. It'll be nice and solid. The other uh, point I'll make here is um, I could have glued those in higher. I could have glued them down here. The reason I glued them where they were is this angle is nice and strong. And we also have, you can see it there, the carbon um, on the angle as well so you know up top there's some flex in the airframe down here there's some flex in the airframe um, but it should be nice and solid up there with the uh, with the carbon so that is how things are progressing all right guys so the plate has been glued on I, I put that on last night and uh, so the glue's all cured and good to go so that's done with high sol uh, just put the holes through there just so it would have some extra holding power but um, that is done. Now that plate on the tank, um, I made it only as wide as this opening. So it just comes on to our blocks there by probably five to seven millimeters. Now I'm totally okay with that because I'm gonna drill the holes at an angle. But the reason that this plate needed to be like that is there's not a lot of room when you put that tank in for maneuvering it. So you couldn't twist it and bring one side out. Uh, it has to come directly out. So, I mean, I could have added an opening there, but I want to keep as much structure in the in the airframe as possible. So, anyways, that's done. Um, I do need to add the nipples on the uh, the tank lines, but uh, I'll do that after. <clears throat> and I can't put that tank in yet because we want to run the fuel lines from the back because they're going to come out of this area right here. So we're going to have a vent line coming to this area, so the output going to the tanks and splitting out. And then we've got the actual vent line, which is going to run here. Um, one little thing I did with the vent was because these caps don't have the flags on them, I just used high sol to, uh, to glue the one of those flags on. So it's just a little bit more obvious that your cap's on and you won't uh, leave the cap on while you're filling the tank. Okay, so in this area, um, these tanks are an absolute nightmare to install. They barely fit. I mean, getting them in there, you're you're jamming these tanks together. I think I've brought that up in another video, but anyways, they're in. They're not easy to get out like the old ones, but uh, we do need to come up with a way to fasten these tanks. Now we could use silicone down in this area and then a glob in the center, but if we ever have to take these tanks out, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, so uh, I don't wanna use the silicone down here. So what I'm going to do is the single engine rails that they included with the kit. Uh, we have to modify the uh, little slot there to fit down there. But essentially what I'm going to do is have those fit in the slot like that. And then we're going to glue a block onto those tanks. And we'll be able to put these in place and then put a screw down onto the... Uh, into the block. So there'll be a screw coming in this point right here, screwing down into the block, and uh, this will just stay in its little home with the, uh, the little tab. And then I think we'll put a piece of ply across there to hold it in place, but we'll figure, figure that side out as well. <clears throat> so that's kind of the progress right now. Um, these lines, so we've got two sets of lines on each tank, right? We've got the uh, pickup line, so the, the vent on the main tank comes back and feeds through the pickup line when you're filling up your tanks. And then once the tanks are full, the air comes out of the vent line and those go towards the front where our vent is right up here. So those are 8mm lines, so we've used the high flow lines and uh, so we should have some good fuel flow there, very little restriction. That's the progress so far. Um, next thing I'm gonna work on is this tank mounting hardware. Uh, just so you have an idea what we're doing here. So we're also gonna, this is gonna be our starting plate. So all of our equipment and plugins and everything are gonna go in this area. So when we wanna start the aircraft and fly the aircraft, the only thing we need to take off is this back hatch. We don't need to take the nose cone off except to plug in the batteries. Everything else happens in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue tabs onto the fuel tanks once they're solid and we're going to have this up a little bit higher like that so the primary mounting point will be on the tanks and it'll be something like this board 
and then we'll have probably two loops or a single loop in the center that this carbon rod, the wing tube, can go through. So it'll just be a, a hole that fits nicely and uh, so that'll be nice and solidly mounted but easily to uh, easy to remove if we need to get uh, into anything below. So that's kind of the idea. And uh, so yeah, next thing I'm gonna work on is the, uh, the rear tank mounting. All right guys, so that is the end of this episode of the Skymaster F-18 build video. Um, some exciting news, we did have our Zukoi uh, air fail safe show up today, which is awesome. Um, I will do a, a video on how to set that up. They can be really, really challenging um, to set up because they don't seem to make a lot of sense. But uh, once you understand the principles behind it, it kind of makes sense. So anyways, um, in the next video, we're going to continue with the fuel system. We are getting very, very close to joining these two uh, fuselage pieces together. Basically, what we have to do next is we've just got to figure out the rear uh, tank mounting system, get everything plumbed to the front of the, uh, the airframe. And uh, once that's done, then we can join the two, uh, two systems together because we no longer need access to this point so um that probably won't be in the next video it most likely will be in the video afterwards so but uh, anyways guys that is everything if you haven't done so already don't forget to hit that thumbs up button uh, if you haven't subscribed don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below uh, both of those things support the channel a lot i appreciate it any comments list them down below as well too so thanks guys for watching we will see you in the next video